Have you ever seen an audio console with a power supply so massive that it can trip breakers? Big old power supply. Let's see if the breaker can handle it. Of course not. Breaker reset. Oh yeah, look at that. Sweet. I do believe we are in business. That's a huge amount of inrush current on that thing. Hello everybody, this is Jordan, as you can tell from the reflective surface. I'm filming this with my phone, so hope everybody's okay with a super shaky video today. This is a Wheatstone digital clock. Actually, no, this is part of a very large audio console. It's a Model A6000. It came from a local radio station, and this is a piece of equipment that I've been excited to obtain. It's from the late 90s. This one's from 97 or 98. It has four audio buses. Each of those buses have two identical repeated stereo balanced outputs. You have four mix minuses. What we have here are two microphone channels, a telco channel with two hybrid inputs. You could even set it up to facilitate the uh, two phone callers talking to each other. That'd be kind of fun. I did rearrange this layout so we have two uh, mic channels here, a telco channel. And you're hearing the battery backup do its thing. We probably just lost our power for a split second there. Interesting timing. Three stereo line inputs. This is coming from the Rivendell system, which is actually currently at my workplace. I'm loading music into it. And we have three other channels down here. This one's going to be like the audio editing and cool edit, you know, computer or whatever. This could be like an auxiliary input. And same thing down here, maybe like a turntable. We do have a Technix SP15. And let me zoom out a little bit and back up. This is all kind of still getting put together here. We have some JBL speakers over here for monitors. We have house plants taking residence on the desk. Those will be moved over here. Microphone processing is down there. We're going to have audio processing and modulation monitors and exciters and everything down in that little rack there. The visible portion of the console is quite thin. It looks like a nice low profile design. Something that I do find interesting is that the headphones are connected down here. You can see the bottom portion of the console itself. There's two jacks on here. And the reason why they did that, it wasn't customer feedback. It was so that you could facilitate mounting this console in a studio desk like this. And almost all of them have jacks like that. And that's kind of, I guess it makes it easier to plug in that way. It's cleaner than having the jack just drilled and put into one of the modules here, I think. So when you plug your headphones in down here, you don't have wires going across the desk, and I think that's primarily what they were looking to do. So we have six stereo line input modules, two sources on each. You can change the input mode, stereo, mono, left channel only, right channel only. Um, let's see, what am I missing here? We have our output modules here. We have two mono sums. For each output module so let's say mono sum one could be sent the program bus or the auxiliary bus either or i don't use the mono sends on this for anything the second one audition or utility bus so it gives you an option it's kind of flexible here's your gain trims here's your vu meter trims this is your vu meter and clock excuse me timer control so each time i turn on a channel it starts over those are jumper selectable, so certain channels can and cannot start that little timer. We have a cue speaker down here, so when you're cueing something before you put it on the air, you see it on the switch to VU meters, and you hear it in your headphones and or just the cue speaker. In addition to controlling the switched VU meter set there, this module has controls for your timer where you can start and stop, you can reset, you can even hold put it in auto mode so when you start a channel strip uh, if it's been selected to start the timer it will do so the switched VU meters are called switched because you can listen to the Q bus when you're queuing or previewing an audio input before you put it to air 
you can listen to one of the external stereo inputs like an off-air feed, or you can look at the different audio buses. In this particular instance, you can listen to the audition bus. It defaults to audition, or you can listen to the external input or any of your sins, your mix minus, either the mono outputs or the auxiliary or the utility bus. The sunlight's very bright, so those buttons are kind of hard to see, plus they're, you know, they've been on for 30 years, so they're a little dim, but I'm not going to complain. So that's what those meters are for. The meters over here are strictly for program. What's going out over the air, or in this case, over the web stream. We have a control room and headphone module here. We have doors moving behind me. That's freaking me out. We got a cat. Come here, kitty. Oh, yeah, by the way, we own a cat now. Now that I'm no longer being startled by the cat, we have headphone control on and off, headphone polarity, EQ, bass and treble. This is very similar to a friend of mine's uh, A300 and the styling and the time frame of it and even the internal circuitry is much the same. This is just on a little bit of a larger scale. You can listen to any of the four audio buses, program audition, utility, auxiliary, so on and so forth, or one of the mono sends or any of the mix minuses. You can listen to any of the sends. These channels do have auxiliary sends of their own. You can also listen to, I think, what is it? Four external inputs, and you can change the monitoring mode. Same thing with studio control. What I'm using studio control for is uh, sending audio to guest headphones. The reason why I've decided to use both modules here is I have my own headphone control that I can adjust my own volume, bass, treble, polarity, EQ, you name it. I can listen to my own discrete source. The guest headphones, which are controlled through the studio output, this studio output feeds a headphone amplifier, which feeds these jacks, you know, all along the desk here. So they can plug in their own headphones. They can adjust their own volume. They can listen to their own source. It uh, just makes it easier. But what I've got right now is my headphones, control rooms for the studio, uh, the studio monitors here. I have the studio control here for guest headphones. I'm going to relabel that guest headphones. This has facilities to do two separate external studios in addition to the control room it's pretty intense how many different things this can do at once but without rambling too much my headphones over here guest headphones over here they don't have to monitor the same thing the talk back button puts my microphone on their headphones so if i need to say something to them while their cans are on i can do so here's a cleaner shot of what those buttons look like so these different headphone outputs can monitor two completely different sides of the console. When I'm talking back to them, if I want to say something to them without having them take their headphones off, I just press this button. My uh, volume control going to their headphones, if I'm talking to them through talkback, is adjustable here. Q level is adjustable here. That's the Q speaker. And I think that's really about it so far. So I have my microphone here and a guest microphone over here, and that's the idea of it. So far, this is what I've got. Like I said, the automation computer is at work. It's gonna to connect to that screen there, those three gray faders there. It's gonna live right there. The side of the desk is off so that I can facilitate wiring and hooking up the audio science sound card, but what I'm doing is while I'm at work, I'm ingesting, you know, hundreds of songs from our music library into the computer. So I have everything from about 1950 to today, anything that's charted. So that'll be a fun music collection to have. The wiring down here is yet to be finished. So I've just, I've run everything, but um, I'll have everything hooked up in short order. The uh, audio processor and stuff is gonna be another video of its own. There's the power supply. It's so massive that I didn't wanna rack it. I didn't want to mount it in any of the racks because it's going to put so much undue stress on it that it might actually break the studio furniture. It runs on 120 volts. It makes, I think, plus and minus 18 volts for audio, plus and minus 12 volts for logic, 48 volts for phantom, which doesn't get used. Um, that is a massive power supply, and I just have it sitting on the floor of the desk here inside of it. It's hooked up to its very own UPS. And um, I have another UPS over there sp specifically for computers. 
here's what we've got for a console. I did have to cut a hole in the desk. That was a, an adventure all its own. In a later video, when I have all the audio processing and stuff hooked up, I'll get direct audio into the uh, camera and um, give you a tour of the completed studio. The desk is assembled. The console is put in the desk. Everything's wired. I just have to hook it all up and make it play. We still have a cat trying to enter. Hi, cat. You really just like it in here, don't you? I try to keep her out of here when possible because she gets inside the cabinets. Let's take a look at our wiring under here. I'm going to get on my knees and then on my back here to show you. There's the cool edit PC. That's a repurposed computer case. There's a modern uh, computer audio science sound card inside there. We have a Crown D75 for monitor amplifier duty. And below that, you can see a small box on the floor. That is a headphone amplifier for the guest headphones. Here's what the bottom of the console looks like. So you have power supply input right here. So you could do either two power supplies or you can do just one. It gives you the option to hook it up on either side. Those jacks inside here are in parallel, so it makes it easy. Microphone one, two, telco. So that's... Uh, Telco channel strip has two hookups here. Stereo line inputs from the computer and various other inputs here. We have output uh, one and two. We have headphones and control monitors, external inputs. Then you have an umbilical cord for power and audio to the VU meters, which connects to the meter bridge. Let's see if I can get up in there and see the, you can see the back side of the VU meters. In fact, I think if I'm careful enough, there we go. So those meters are made in England. I did LED replacements on those lamps. So that's what it looks like under the console. And you can see where I had to cut the desk to make that fit. That was a quick and dirty tour of the home studio showing my new console. It's been completely recapped, realigned, it's ready to go. It exceeds original specifications. It's quiet. It does everything I need it to do and more. Next video, we'll show it working with audio processing, music on the computer, audio editing on that screen there, and uh, direct audio samples, hopefully. Thank you for watching.